Wallace. And I have John Holling here with me. Three phases, dressage, cross country, show jump. And you're out on course and something's going wrong or going right. You know how to react to what they're doing. It was built originally to be a schooling facility and so everything's set up very conveniently. to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros, and we are here, John, in what episode? This is episode three of season three. It's pretty awesome. It's three and three. Three and three. Yeah. What a great show we have, huh? Yeah, it's actually really exciting, Rick. So we've got, so everybody listening knows, we've got um, some pretty awesome guests coming up here. We've got Kevin McNabb, um, who's going to be joining us from his base in England, um, Kevin is an Olympian for Australia, and he actually just rode at the Tokyo Olympics. And then after that, we're going to make that little trip to the United Kingdom, and then we're just going to keep on flying, heading east, and we're going to head over to India, and we're going to catch up with our very good friend who we haven't seen in a long time, Intiaz Aniz, who competed for India at the Sydney Olympics and um, the 2002 World Championships, which I think were Hareth. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, yeah. So anyway, what have you been up to? Me? Um, a lot of things have been happening. Actually, uh, we just sold a horse. Uh, Munson Sloop got sold today. Oh, congratulations. Uh, yeah, Melissa Paul. Congratulations to her. Um, so that happened, and I bought a new RV motor coach. Mm. That happened today. You were telling me about this. So you didn't like the camper trailer? No, I didn't like it. We decided it took a whole truck because it had a fifth wheel so we couldn't use both trucks for the trailers uh it was not what we wanted i always wanted a motor coach so we got one well i'm excited that you do because now i know where to hang out yeah like when we were at stable view last year and i made myself lunch when nobody was there it was great that was in the other camper that we it was it was a nice camper it just wasn't what we wanted but this one's just as nice and it's on we're gonna get like your face put on the side of it yeah, the John and Rick show. That's what you should do. Yeah, that's a good idea. We could promote the show on your camper. It could be our oh, moving, moving brilliant. studio. So I had something interesting happen today. What so happened to you? I was out hacking with um, our working student, Callie, and right. we were trotting. And it's the time of year where here anyway, it's just super, super busy, um, right. which is a good problem. And I'm trotting Archie. And we get done trotting and I said to her, look, have you ever ponied a horse? And she looked at me like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, pony, like you're going to lead one while you ride the other. And she said, I've never even heard of that, but okay. And so <laughs> I had to take her back to the barn. I pulled all the tack off of Archie, put a cooler on him because it's, I realize as I say this to everybody listening, you're going to think I'm crazy, but it's cold in Florida right now. It is cold. Uh, I agree. It's wet. It's cold. We have so we put the cooler on Archie and she took him out for a pony hack around. And it was, it made me think like we used to do that a lot. When I used to work for Peter, we would do trot sets ponying. We would even occasionally do a canter set ponying. Um, those were have more rare. Have Have you not met Elisa Wallace? She's I know, like but. Four while she's doing trot sets. Yeah, I know. And I, I don't know why I stopped doing it other than I'm a control freak, I guess, but. I stopped doing it because of that too. I don't, yeah. I don't want to get happy. I don't want to go off the horse. Cause I mean, look, great that somebody else wants to do it. I don't want to do it. Right. Right. Well, anyway, it was interesting. And that made me think about like, then I got talking to her. I'm like, so there's like a lot of stuff that we used to do that you don't do anymore. Like, how about I said to her, do you ever want to get back on cross country if you fall off? And she's like, no, I want to go home and fix it. I said, exactly. But when I was your age, like if you didn't get back on, it was kind of like, mm, maybe you've lost your edge. You only fell off in the middle of the course. Why don't you want to get back on and go? And she looked at me like, you got to be kidding me. Like if I'm at home, yeah, but at the horse show, I just want to vacate the premises. I'm like, no, like if you didn't get back on after a crasher of a fall, you better be on the way to the hospital or people are going to be like looking at you like, mm, John's lost his edge. Just Did you was... watch some video? Because that's true. Yeah, but it is true that I've lost my edge. No, that 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 all happened. But what inspired you 
the pony even, the pony thing inspired me was, that i thought to myself, out. like what's all the other stuff we used to do like the things that right. remember when we were coming out of long format and we were transitioning to this shorter format everybody was like oh we're gonna lose all the horsemanship and stuff and it made me think about what's the stuff we've lost and as far as i can see it's uh not getting back on when you fall off well that and carrying weight carrying weight i gotta get onto about weight pads next time yep. i remember say it's 165 pounds was the goal right right and um i remember having to lift jen's weight pad up for her and I was shocked at how much weight they had to carry. And they'd slide weights down, like lead weights down the side of their boots. It was kind of brutal. I mean, I'm, I got to tell you, I remember I didn't ever have to carry it because we, with our saddles and everything, we're at 165. But, you know, mm -hmm. girls, they're they're going to have to carry weight. Yep. Yep. No, it was, it was brutal. It was unfair on the girls. But even more than that, it was brutal on the poor horses. Um, I agree. But it was a little bit more, I think it's interesting, like, I think eventing still has it, but it was definitely a little bit more of like a warrior mentality back then, wasn't it? Yeah, it definitely was that. I mean, yeah, I look back and go, wow, we've come a long way. Yeah, maybe slightly less skilled, but way tougher. Yeah. Yo, yeah. back then. Back then. Yes, I, yes, I agree. We were I slightly less skilled, but way tougher. I thought, yeah, way tougher. I, yeah. We, we were definitely that. Except for Elisa, she still got it. Oh, wait, I just hurt my finger. Sorry, hold on, I need a Band-Aid. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Um, so what we've got, Ocala Horse Trials coming up here as well right. this weekend. Yep. Um, and I think it's like, they've got 700 entries. They start on Thursday. I saw that, Emily posted that. <clears throat> and I know Rocking Horse was a couple weeks ago. Yep. That we did. Um, and it got cold there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be cold this weekend still, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's look, everybody out there, it's Florida and, and it's cold, but it's fine because we just get to feel a little bit of the North without the snow. It's not too bad actually. So Thursday is 68 and sunny, but it is a low of 38. So be ready. Friday is a high of 70. Saturday's 70, and then Sunday is only 64 and rain, and that's the Super Bowl, too. Who are you rooting for in the Super Bowl? The one that wins. Yeah, really? Come on. Who's in the Super Bowl, Rick? Do you know? Nope. Oh, my gosh. How are we friends? You don't even know this stuff. <laughs> well, I kind of watched it. It was coming up, and then I got distracted, and so, no. All right, so it's the Los Angeles Rams yep. and the Cincinnati Bengals. And, oh, and it's the Bengals first times like in forever. Yeah. Yeah. Since yeah, Boomer yeah. Esiason. And mm -hmm. I remember watching that last Super Bowl they were in when the wide receiver broke his leg. Right. Oh, it was terrible. Uh, but terrible. yeah, so Rams and, and Bengals. So what do you like better, a Ram or a Bengal? Tiger. Well, I'm going to go for the Bengals because I believe they deserve to win after all, but it's been 70 years, something like that. I don't know. Right. I think I think the entire country is on the Bengal bandwagon. I'm with you too. Oh, I like the Bengals, but go. I also like the Rams. I think Matt Stafford deserve, deserves a chance. Well, okay. So there you go. That's our football minute for everybody. You're welcome. Yay, <laughs> yay Rick says. Yay. That was good. So look, I caught in. I had some conversation with you. I could talk Bengal. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate. It. I appreciate that. Um, so who do you guys have going this weekend? Are you running anything? Nothing. Nothing at Ocala. Wow. The weekend wow. off. Good for you. You just going to do this share us on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. <laughs> You're such a liar. You're not going at all. No, nope. I did the pony at the WEC. Uh, uh, Teddy Buyer did the pony. He hadn't shown since last March. He was super. They were super together. It was awesome. Teddy Buyer, um, they ride with Karen O'Connor, but she's doing the little hunter pony and she's never done the hunters before. And she got good ribbons and stuff. It was awesome. That is fun. And actually, in our next segment, you're going to be there. I am going to be there. Yeah, we're going to interview Kevin McNabb, and you're going to interview him from WEC standing ringside, which is pretty cool. So for any of you guys who are listening to this, you want to go check it out on YouTube or Facebook, because then you can watch this. Um, which brings me to my next point, Rick, which is to tell everybody, guys, mm -hmm. we need your help. So we need you to subscribe to us on YouTube. Yeah. Um, check us out on Facebook. We're on all of the platforms. So it's awesome when you guys um, subscribe to us on the podcast stuff, but also if you can give us a review on there, 
preferably a five star review, but be honest, right? That's cool. Constructive criticism, criticism is good. Maybe don't give us like one star and tell us we're terrible. Um, but you know, all those star ratings help out the show. They help us get more um, into the algorithm to get more uh, out there. So we want to be out there. Rick and I, we're out there. We're out there. We're the, we, we are out there. That, that was really good. So if you point down here, that's where the YouTube subscription will be. So Joel put it right there so people can join. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Um, okay, well, listen, Rick, we're going to be back here in a moment. You need to head over to WEC, and we are going to catch up with Kevin. And right. you guys don't want to miss him. And then I'm telling everybody right now, just full disclosure, MT Azanese is an incredible guest that we're going to have here in segment four. So you guys stick around for the whole show today. All right. It's going to be amazing. I agree with you. Want to advertise on the John and Rick show? Contact John at 352-875-8622 or call Rick at 850-879-2649. For a horse owner on the road, your trailer is essential. No one enjoys being stuck on the road. At Horse Trailer Pros, we repair, renovate, and maintain all makes and models of horse trailers. We work directly with your insurance company or manufacturer for warranty repairs and insurance claims. Our state-of-the-art facility provides quick turnaround and friendly customer service. Considering a living quarter conversion, we do those too. Find comfort on the road with Horse Trailer Pros. Call or text 352-804-2131. Horsetrailerpros.com. I Love My Horse Equestrian Boutique, located at WEC on the Plaza inside Arena 3, is pleased to offer all of your equestrian needs. Come check out Steuben Saddles. They have a 100-year history of providing high-quality saddles for eventing, hunters, jumpers, and dressage riders. If you want to look stylish walking around the competition, Dewberry has a tradition of high-quality footwear and accessories since 1870. Their Galway boots are stylish and comfortable, perfect for walking cross-country for both men and women. Then check out the Shockamole breeches for men and women. They've got fine fabrics at competitive prices. Head on over to the children's section where you can see all the show coats, shirts, and breeches for the little ones. Kimes Ranch jeans as seen in the series Yellowstone. Great fitting jeans and high quality denim. Shirts, hats, and jackets for men and women. They also have all of your safety needs covered. Safety vests and of course 1K helmets manufactured to exacting standards with MIPS technology. Visit the store at WEC on the plaza in Arena 3 and the mobile unit at all of the major eventing competitions. Sweet Dixie South is an equestrian facility built for the lifestyle of eventers of all levels. Whether you are coming to Ocala for the entire season, a week, a month, or a year, this beautiful 160-acre farm is the place to settle in and enjoy your time with horses. They offer a full cross-country course with two water features, banks, ditches, an amazing footing to gallop, a spectacular all-weather footing ring, large grass jumping fields, and dressage rings. Located in the rolling hills of North Marion County in Reddick, Florida, Sweet Dixie South has 100 stalls and numerous paddocks, apartments, a line of camper hookups, washer and dryer amenities, as well as common areas to complete your experience during your stay. Under the ownership of Mike Campbell and the management of Can Do Joe Adams at Top Rail Tack, Sweet Dixie South has transformed into a premier eventing training facility in Florida. Go to www.sweetdixiesouth.com for more information. Hey, Rick here. Do you have a horse suffering from poor performance, anxiety and fear, low appetite, agitation or nervousness? Stressless can help. Stressless, the hot horse remedy, is veterinarian developed, show safe, all natural formula that promotes calmness, focus and mood balance in horses experiencing stress related to training, showing, racing, stall rest and travel. This equine supplement encourages calmness, focus, and mood balance without affecting the motor skills or energy levels of your horse. It promotes a more willing and balanced temperament with no drowsiness or impaired function, resulting in increased focus, a calm mind, and a happier horse and rider. Try Stressless today and see for yourself why we think Stressless is the best hot horse remedy you will find. Check us out at centerlinedistribution.net and on Facebook and Instagram as Stressless Horse Supplement. 
Welcome back to the John and Rick Show brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros. And we are now in our Stress Less segment. So big thank you to Stress Less, such a great product. We really appreciate their support here. And in this segment, we are very fortunate to be joined by Australian Olympian, Kevin McNabb. So Kevin, thank you very much for joining. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, thanks, yeah. Kevin. So Kevin is, as I said, an Olympian. He won the team silver medal at the Tokyo Olympics. He was also sixth at Kentucky last year in the five-star on the same um, Scuderia. Um, fourth at Poe, winner of the seven-year-old world championships um, last year as well, and winner of the Aubers Osberton, sorry, Osberton three long. So um, a pretty good season there last year, Kevin, to get you set up to head out, out to the Olympics up in Tokyo. Yeah, no, we had a great season. Uh, everything just sort of fell into place. We did all the events that were available to do. With um, but When we had lockdown, there was a limited event. So we basically just went to anything that we, we could do and it all fell into place. And we, had, we had a great year. Um, yeah, so that's, that's really exciting. And um, so that was, which horse was that with? That was with Scuderia, is that right? Uh, Scuderia 1918, Don Quadam. Yeah, that's a big name, man. I wasn't sure if it was two horses. Yeah, no, it's a mouthful. <laughs> but actually, they were the the results all on all on their horses. So it was it was a fantastic year for them, and a fantastic right. year for us. Um, and so just a little bit, just before we get into sort of how you got into the sport and your childhood, which I want to really make sure we touch base on in this segment, just talk us through, you know, what was it like going to Tokyo? I know, obviously. Um, with lockdown and all of that, it was a little bit tricky, but um, as far as the actual nuts and bolts of the competition, it looked like a pretty unique venue, especially out on that Island for the cross country. What was that all, all like for you? It was pretty amazing. The, I mean, it all ran very smoothly, everything. I mean, they did the um, organizing um, committee, they, they didn't miss anything from start to finish from the time we, we landed until the time we left, er, everything was, um, on time. I mean, I couldn't believe that they they made it all run so smoothly. We were tested every day. Um, for, uh, literally everything was run perfectly. So uh, it, it made our job easy. Got it. Um, cool. Well, that's good. And and the you know we talked a little bit with some other people. I think we talked with Doug Payne about the actual cross country course. Um, and I know at, at the Olympics, it's always sort of a difficult thing for the designer to do to get that balance right between presenting a proper test, making sure that you're testing the best and still giving um, some of the developing nations that are there the opportunity to be able to get around and achieve an, a result. So how do you think Derek did with that goal um, of, of balancing those two things? I think that he also got that spot on. I mean, there were, were certainly uh, combinations there that put a result on the table, which wasn't necessarily competitive, but was very successful. And he, they, they obviously um, weren't able to make the time cross country, but they were able to jump around. And those who did want to make the time had to take a few more risks and um, some paid off and some didn't. But uh, I thought that the, the course was perfect for the occasion. Right, great. And obviously that, um, that corner, um, the frangible corner there, was a bit of controversy. Um, I'm a big supporter of frangible technology. I think, um, you know, the question is, did they, is it perfect? Probably not. Um, how do you think that all went um, and how much you really feel that affected the competition and did it affect your ride at all, knowing that that stuff was out there? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's what um, people don't necessarily take into consideration is that everyone did walk the course. Everyone knew that there were frangible um, pins and, and there were MIM clips and you need to ride accordingly. So I, possibly there's, there's occasions when people might be um, disappointed with the result, but I think if that saves one life or, or one bad accident, then you would still consider it a success. All right, well said, well said. Yeah, on that point, Kevin, um, I think um, Lucinda Green and John and I have had these conversations and that was a different color men, men clip, correct, John? Yeah, that was a yellow that. clip on that one. But so as Lucinda was talking about, you know, in the past, when you know it's a yellow clip, you're going to have to arrange your position, your, your ride to that jump accordingly because the, the harsh angles, you know, might cause the problems. And I guess that 
did y'all know that at the time that the yellow clip would do that or it was did was that learned later on yeah no i think that that was um i mean every, everybody knew like i said it, it's one of those things that it, it's part of modern course building and when you walk the course you need to um know what's going to be there and then ride accordingly i mean it, it's very fair everyone gets to walk the course everyone gets to see what's going to be there and um i think that if it was a if we were show jumping and somebody has a rail down um then they have a rail down it, across country they don't fall like show jumps do but still if they if they have a a, a yellow mim clip it's going to fall uh easier so you need to treat it a little bit more like a show jump right right um so and i i think that's all very well said and and for what it's worth it i feel the same way um, so I appreciate your thoughts on that. Um, so just transitioning back, obviously right now you're based in England, but you actually grew up in Australia. Um, and just how did you get into the sport? Just maybe just briefly walk us through sort of how you got your start as a kid riding and eventing. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll uh, fast track it. I got my mum and, and dad were silly enough to get me a horse when I was two, when I asked for one, apparently. And then I was in far north Queensland, so there wasn't a lot going on there. And I did basically everything I could, some, you know, pony clubs in Carnas, hacking, um, literally a bit of everything. And I read in the horse magazine about this thing called eventing. And then uh, that really interested me. It looked like fun. So then I finished um, my year 11 and 12 in southeast Queensland at um, the Carlton International School, which had an equestrian program. And that was to get me a little bit closer to where the, the sport was. And it went from there. Right. And then you, um, you went out and sort of your first, I'm trying to pull it up here now, cause I'm going to mess this up. The first place that you went to a way to ride with, who was that with? Tony Manka. Well, I, I actually went to, I had a few, um, along the way I, I had, um, obviously some help from other people, Ron Patterson, um, Beryl Sabadina and, um, I think Ron Patterson actually introduced this to Tony or that he actually said to my parents that possibly while I'm there, I'm going to be close to Tony and I should, um, get some help from him. And that, that turned out to be a really good move. Right. Um, and then at some point you moved from Tony on to Heath, right? Yeah. So when I was at the Carlton International School, I, I actually lived with um, Tony and Tracy Manka in year 12. And then I, I um, went to school each day, but actually um, based out of, out of their yard. And that was a really good experience. And after that, I then, um, I was in Queensland for uh, a little bit after I finished school and worked and rode. Then I, I wanted to do my level one so that I had some qualifications. So um, Heath Ryan had a, a program at the New South Wales Equestrian Centre where I could go and do that. And so I, I went down there and um, then I was there for, I think, four years uh, in the Hunter Valley or in, around that area with Heath and um, Craig and Prue Barrett. And that, that's where I met uh, Bordy. Right. Ah. Hey, I got a question, Kevin. So, you know, we talked about uh, at least a lot of us have these positions about center, center riding or, you know, a little bit forward position. And I know... You, your thoughts are you're not really not in a forward position. You're in a balanced position, but you do have a unique way of riding. And we do know that Jacob Fletcher over here worked with you and has that same unique way of going. Tell us about what your thoughts are on the way that that happens. I, I think that with, with modern sport, um, we need to be able to ride the, the lines that they, they build us cross country efficiently. And, and um, the way to be able to do that is to apply an aid effectively at any time, um, approach, jump, departure. And I think that if you're in a balanced position, rather than a, a if we want to talk about a, a defensive seat or you're a little bit behind the movement, I think from a balanced position, you can apply a, an aid in a, in a lot clearer way and a lot more effective way to allow you to come up with answers to those questions. So I prefer not to talk about being forward and being behind, but for me, it's about being balanced. And sometimes being balanced means you're a little bit forward and sometimes being balanced means you're a little bit defensive. It depends on the situation. I think that's, but, that's I'll put. Yeah, and it seems to me like that would be, um, 
you know, it, I, want, I don't want to say revolutionary, but important, becoming more and more important as we go back to what we were talking about earlier with these fences um, that have these safety devices on them. Obviously, you don't want to be way behind them coming down there and mashing into that stuff because where maybe you would get away with that in the past, now you're probably not going to as much. Yeah, no, the, the courses are definitely a lot more technical now, and, and um, I think we need to ride accordingly. Right. Let's do this. Let's take a quick break. And then I want to catch back up with that and then talk a little bit about your transition from your home in Australia to where you are now to your home in uh, England. So let's take a quick break. We will be right back with Kevin McNabb. Hey, Rick here. Do you have a horse suffering from poor performance, anxiety and fear, low appetite, agitation or nervousness? Stressless can help. Stressless, the hot horse remedy is veterinarian developed, show safe, all natural formula that promotes calmness, focus, and mood balance in horses experiencing stress related to training, showing, racing, stall rest, and travel. This equine supplement encourages calmness, focus, and mood balance without affecting the motor skills or energy levels of your horse. It promotes a more willing and balanced temperament with no drowsiness or impaired function, resulting in increased focus, a calm mind, and a happier horse and rider. Try Stressless today and see for yourself why we think Stressless is the best hot horse remedy you will find. Check us out at centerlinedistribution.net and on Facebook and Instagram as Stressless Horse Supplement. Jump for Joy fences are easy to move, lightweight, durable, and low maintenance. So we're out here on the cross country. We just finished over in the show jumping over the Jump for Joy fences. Had a great time schooling over them. They're really nice and easy to move, so we were able to adjust some things and really have the exact school that we needed thanks to the Jump for Joy fences. I love them. Order yours at jumpforjoyusa.com. Rick Wallace here bringing you Equibrew, a live probiotic that is geared to help your horse's gut health. I'm a true believer in this Equibrew and it really makes a difference in all of my horses. Equibrew is safe, non-toxic, and clean sport compliant for FEI and racing events. Equibrew is an intact fermentation product with very high numbers of beneficial microbes. Order at Equibrew.com or 850-879-2649. Summit Joint Performance, the injectable joint supplement used by numerous international and Olympic riders, invites you to experience the winning Summit difference. Made of all natural ingredients, Summit increases mobility and comfort. Win your class with Summit Joint Performance. Grant Showalter has over 15 years of equine bodywork and saddle fitting experience. His technique uses manual pressure and stretching to release points of restriction, leading to freer movement, reduced soreness, and restored range of motion. He has a thorough understanding of the importance of a properly fitted saddle. He can quickly identify and correct any balance issues and can adjust your saddle on site. I personally have Grant work on all of my event horses to keep them feeling their best before, during, and after their competitions. Grant is based in Florida year-round, but regularly travels to Georgia, Tennessee, and the surrounding areas. For more information or to schedule an appointment, call 484-639-4454. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros, and we are joined from the UK with Kevin McNabb. Uh, coming back for a second segment, thank you, Kevin, for being here. I think... Uh, it's real interesting to hear about your life and where you've been and going from Australia to the Olympics. And of course now in the UK, tell us about your base in the UK and how that's going. Um, so we, we moved over in, uh, well, I came in May of 2012. Um, my wife M came in February of 2012 and we came for three months and we're still here. So we, the calendar is really good. There's a lot of opportunity here. And for us, it was sort of a no brainer that we would, we would stay um, pretty well set up now. We, we've got a yard uh, with 23 stables and then 40 acres of turnout. And then we have another 170 acres, um, which we also is attached to the property, which we use indoor, outdoor, um, cross-country schooling and a little gallop as well. So 
at the moment we're pretty well set up in the UK and, and our plan was to stay here for our competitive career. Um, and so, sorry, that was, I've got a question. It just has the speakers in the background on that. Hey, Kevin, so that's a, that's a lot of property and be cool. So where are you located in England? Obviously, uh, um, not obviously, you don't know, maybe Elisa and I were there back in December looking for horses, but where are you specifically in the UK? Um, we're in uh, Guildford, um, which is just south of London. We're half an hour from Heathrow, half an hour from Heathrow. Right, so Marlborough is to the west of you then. Yeah, you're an hour and 45 from us. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, okay. very cool. That's a, that's a good piece of chunk of land to be able to be accessed to, so that's terrific. You yeah, we're really lucky to have that so close to London. So one of the things I wanted to make sure we got to talk about here, Kevin, is you have uh, obviously are an incredible competitor, but also you're a pretty darn good coach because not only do you help your wife, Emma, um, and she's had a pretty amazing career, but on my list here, I got that you have trained Jock Paget and Chris Burton as well. So just... Tell me a little bit about your your teaching, your business side of that, and what it's been like really helping those three. I mean, between Emma, Jock, and Chris, that's a pretty good trio there um, to have in your resume. Yeah, maybe it's also that I had such good riders that um, talented people that came through, they might have also done the same with anybody else. But <laughs> I, I, was, I was lucky to have guys like that come through. I was also, um, I guess, in a situation then when we were running a sale yard, and so I had a lot of horses um, which needed riding and basically the better that they rode, the quicker they um, produced the horses and the better it was for everybody. So there was a lot of opportunity there um, for myself and, and also for them. And it, it just, it, it worked really well. Uh, I was lucky to have them um, come through and they were um, great people to, to have to work with. So who was on the team with you at Tokyo? At Tokyo, it was Stuart and Andrew. Okay, got oh, it. Oh, not Stuart. Stuart, 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 Andrew and Shane. Got it. Okay, okay, yeah. cool. That's, and, and, um, and well done. Uh, you. I, I, yeah, thank you. I, I, unfortunately for, for Stuart, I ended up having his position on the team. But he was still part of the team. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's all the whole new three people on the team thing and a traveling reserve is, it's, it's tough. I mean, I would not want to be that that person that's there and not getting to compete. That would be a difficult thing to do for sure. Yeah, I think it's a it's a pretty tough job, but um, unfortunately, somebody's got to do it. And, and and this time for me, it actually worked out. I mean, it worked out really well for me. Right. So no no complaints with the job. <laughs> hey Kevin, what's your plan for uh, 22? Where are you heading? Uh, Kentucky on Don Kudan and maybe Lamoulin on a best friend. Then, um, you know, we'll wait and see what happens with for Tony. And um, hopefully that I've, I've got something which is going well and is in contention. Ho hopefully we, we run there and they're our, they're our, um, our, our big ones that we're, we're looking at anyway at the moment. So maybe Maryland oh, in the... Thank you. Oh, you want me to try a bit? Oh. Well, who do we have there, Kevin? Thank you. That's, That's Annabelle. Cool. All right. <laughs> That's our eldest. Um, just trying a bit of yogurt. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. We love it. It's so good probiotic. There you go. It is. <laughs> so, so Kevin, so you were saying you've got one coming to Kentucky. You've got one going to what to Poe? Um Lamoulin. Lamoulin. Sorry, that's in the spring. My bad. Yeah. Um so just walk us through because I think it's interesting for people to hear what goes into your process of where to take each horse why would you bring the one here and then the one to Lamoulin and, and break them up like that is it because you don't want multiple horses at, at a five star or is it because the cross country suits particular horses it's expensive to go to Kentucky <laughs> otherwise I'd bring two <laughs> right okay in, in some ways it seems cheaper to take two but they're both with the same owner so um it's it's expensive so and the reason I would do Kentucky rather than um, for me anyway, badminton is, I think in a selection year, it's good to be on a surface for your dressage and show jumping. It's a very level playing field. And so for selectors, it's easy 
next year to look at that and Sorry, right. are you back yet? You're good. We still got your audio. You're fine. Yeah, yeah, you got me. Sorry to um, get rid of that call. Um, yeah, I think for, from a selection um, point of view, it's easier to 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 watch someone's performance on on a surface. And I mean, that's what we're going to hopefully be on um, at Bretoni. Whereas if you go to, I mean, badminton is an event which I'd love to do. I haven't done it yet, but it, it's on grass for your dressage and show jumping, and that can change a lot from the start of the competition to the end of the competition. And so for me, I think that I would be better positioned to go and do something um, which would make the selectors job easier. Right. That makes sense. So about that, Kevin, on the selectors, we're talking about the, uh, the world championship, correct? Yes. Yeah. But hopefully next year, uh, 23, I'll be able to go and do badminton. That'd be Perfect. awesome. Which I think was going to bring yeah. me to my next question here, Kevin, which is being from Australia, you've ridden obviously around Adelaide. Um, so you've ridden a lot of these five stars. So one of the really cool things I always think is great that I'll never get the opportunity to do is to be able to say that you've ridden at all of them. So of, of the ones that um, you've ridden and what's left for you to do to get that done. And, and is that something that even interests you? Yeah, absolutely. I'd like, I mean, I'd like to do them all in one year, but unfortunately to do them all in one year, you almost need to, have a horse in Australia and needs to be based there. And I mean, originally when we came over here, I was, I was, that was one of my goals was to be able to do that, but it actually turns out not so easy to have a horse in Australia as well. Right. Um, oh, so let's get rid of that one. No, so, no um, yeah, so for me, I have to do uh, Maryland and I haven't done badminton yet. So they're, they're two that I would like to do hopefully next year, badminton. And um, we'll just wait and see how this year goes. Maybe I'll get to, to Maryland. Right. And I would assume the hope is that you don't get to Maryland because if you get to Maryland, it might be because you didn't get to uh, the world championships. Is that yeah. right? Or would it be or, a different horse? Or might, be, might bring a different horse. Ah, very good. That's we'll how that happens. See. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Very Multiple cool. Multiple horses, John. It's a good thing to have, huh? Yeah, I don't think you can have too many good horses. No, this is true. <laughs> As long as you put the qualifier of good in there, that's for sure. Um, Rick, go ahead. What do you got? No, I was just saying that that would be kind of cool. We don't have too many. I know Boyd, I think, has the distinguished um, ability to say he's been to all of them since he did Maryland. And it seems like, was it Tim Price or was it Janelle? So there was somebody else that had that distinguished thing when they did Maryland. Um, but I can't remember who. I know. Boyd. Yeah, I can't remember who either, but I I know Bordy Bordy was in that position. Yeah, definitely. Right, right. Well, good... I think you'll be there. Not to worry, not to worry. Um, well, listen, Kevin, we really appreciate you making the time. Um, for those who don't know, you've been incredibly generous because we tried to do this earlier in the week and we had some real internet issues. So, thank you for for agreeing to come back on again and redo this for us so that we could have much better quality for our listeners and, and viewers. Pleasure. Great to talk to you guys. Yeah. Great hey, to talk to you. Looks, looks like you've got a really nice day over there. It's a yeah. beautiful day in Florida. You really need to come visit buddy. I know. Hey, <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Kevin, I'm at the world equestrian center, which is, uh, you know, it's an amazing facility. So hopefully you'll get over here to see this. Yeah. That sounds amazing. I'd, I'd love to get over there and see that. Yeah. yeah, yeah need, to, need to do it. Um, so, for everybody else, hang tight uh, because we are going to be right back and we are now going to venture from England with Kevin. We're going to head on over a little bit east and uh, go to India and we're going to catch up with our longtime friend, Imtiaz Aniz, and see what he's been up to. Um, so, Kevin, make sure you check out this next portion of our show because I actually think you're going to find it really interesting. MT is a pretty awesome dude. Sounds good. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Cheers. I Love My Horse Equestrian Boutique, located at WEC on the plaza inside Arena 3, is pleased to offer all of your equestrian needs. Come check out Steuben Saddles. They have a hundred year history of providing high quality saddles for eventing, hunters, jumpers, and dressage riders. If you want to look stylish walking around the competition, Dewberry has a tradition of high quality footwear and accessories since 1870. Their Galway boots are stylish and comfortable, perfect for walking cross country for both men and women. Then check out the Shockamole Breeches for men and women. They've got fine fabrics at competitive prices. 
Head on over to the children's section where you can see all the show coats, shirts, and breeches for the little ones. Kimes Ranch jeans as seen in the series Yellowstone. Great fitting jeans and high quality denim. Shirts, hats, and jackets for men and women. They also have all of your safety needs covered. Safety vests and of course 1K helmets manufactured to exacting standards with MIPS technology. Visit the store at WEC on the plaza in Arena 3 and the mobile unit at all of the major eventing competitions. For a horse owner on the road, your trailer is essential. No one enjoys being stuck on the road. At Horse Trailer Pros, we repair, renovate, and maintain all makes and models of horse trailers. We work directly with your insurance company or manufacturer for warranty repairs and insurance claims. Our state-of-the-art facility provides quick turnaround and friendly customer service. Considering a living quarter conversion, we do those too. Find comfort on the road with Horse Trailer Pros. Call or text 352-804-2131, horsetrailerpros.com. Hey, Rick here. Do you have a horse suffering from poor performance, anxiety and fear, low appetite, agitation or nervousness? Stressless can help. Stressless, the hot horse remedy, is veterinarian developed, show safe, all natural formula that promotes calmness, focus and mood balance in horses experiencing stress related to training, showing, racing, stall rest, and travel. This equine supplement encourages calmness, focus, and mood balance without affecting the motor skills or energy levels of your horse. It promotes a more willing and balanced temperament with no drowsiness or impaired function, resulting in increased focus, a calm mind, and a happier horse and rider. Try Stressless today and see for yourself why we think Stressless is the best hot horse remedy you will find. Check us out at centerlinedistribution.net and on Facebook and Instagram as Stressless Horse Supplement. Rick Wallace here bringing you Equibrew, a live probiotic that is geared to help your horse's gut health. I'm a true believer in this Equibrew and it really makes a difference in all of my horses. Equibrew is safe, non-toxic, and clean sport compliant for FEI and racing events. Equibrew is an intact fermentation product with very high numbers of beneficial microbes. Order at Equibrew.com or 850-879-2649. Welcome back to the John and Rick show brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros. And we are so excited here because Rick and I are welcoming in our very longtime friend, MT Azanese, who is joining us from India, which is pretty cool, man. Um, so MT, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks so much. Thanks, uh, John. And thanks, Rick, for having me. Yeah. So just for those who don't um, maybe know you or um, know enough about you, um, you know, obviously you're an accomplished three-day event rider. You rode around a lot of big horse shows. You competed internationally for India. Why don't you just kind of walk us through sort of some of your highlights of what you um, were able to do for India? Well, as you know, in the sport of eventing, uh, Jonathan, we have more lows than highs. So uh, <laughs> it's going to be pretty quick. <laughs> but that's what we love about the sport. You know, ever since I was a kid, I was introduced to the sport in India. And uh, we don't have much level out there, you know, even a one star is the maximum that there is. So I had to leave the country in order to really pursue this dream. And I moved to Australia uh, as a young boy and thinking that, you know, this is what I want to do. And really learned the ropes, learned the sport, learned how to do it and was able to compete at a one star, then went into a two star, went into a three star. So I was very lucky and fortunate, had great trainers, great people that helped me, support me. And most amazing, I had the best horses. So I was very, very lucky. And they were all growing with me. I didn't have a made horse or a ready horse. I did my first one star on a horse that did its first one star. I did my first two star on a horse that did its first two star. So that was pretty special as well that we were both together. I can say we were lucky, but uh, I was very, very fortunate. And uh, I then did my first three star at Adelaide. Uh, in those days, Adelaide was a three star event. It wasn't a four star event. Uh, so right. And when we a, talk about stars here, MT, just interrupt, we're talking the old starring system, correct? So yes, you did the, the old starring system. Yes, right. Sorry, so you did the, the four star at Adelaide. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm old time. I'm, 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 I'm way old. I have to shave so that my gray doesn't show. Uh, yeah, this was all too. in 1999, you know, so even before 2000. Uh, so that's when I did my first three star. Uh, and then I qualified for Sydney 2000 Olympic Games. So that was pretty big and a little bit of feather in my hat. But again, 
right place, right time, right horse. Everything worked. I was in Australia. I was very fortunate and I got to actually ride for represent India and be the first civilian to ever, because it's a very army dominated sport uh, to actually represent India at the Olympic Games. So that was pretty big. Uh, and then after that, I moved to the US. Uh, bigger, uh, you know, ground, bigger playing field, uh, more competition. Uh, so in 2000, after the Sydney Olympic Games, I moved out here and I was fortunate again to be with the right group. I trained with some wonderful, wonderful trainers, uh, as you know, uh, you know, based in Florida, based in Atlanta. And I got a fortune again to ride at the 2002 uh, World Equestrian Games. So a uh, second thing that happened and, you know, again, uh, I was the first Indian ever to, uh, to do this. So it was pretty big. Uh, and then, you know, riding it uh, at the three stars in, in a, at, uh, you know, those days there used to be a, an event called the Fox Hall International Event, which was in Atlanta. Of course, uh, we have the Fair Hill International three-day event. So I was fortunate enough to run in, in Red Hills. So there were a lot of CIC three stars and three stars that I did for another 10 years. Uh, so it's been, a, I, I cannot complain. I've had a wonderful life with wonderful people and amazing horses. Hey, MT, let's break it down a little bit. So that, that's pretty cool that, that the way that all happened. Um, Take us back because, you know, I, I've known you for quite a while um, and we've been good friends. I kind of want to break down what got you from India to Australia and what you were doing in Australia. How old were you? Who did you work with? You know, how did that all happen? Because, you know, that <laughs> that's that's pretty impressive that you got yourself from India to Australia and started doing something that you had a passion for. How did that happen? Absolutely. I mean, that itself was a leap of faith, you know, because this is what I wanted to do. And I realized that I wanted to ride at Sydney at the 2000 Olympic Games. And Rick, if I tell you this, because I know you have a lot of eventing viewers, I'd never evented and I was, I was already had my sights on 2000 Sydney Olympics. So that's pretty scary thought as well, because I said, oh, well, you know, what is this? You know, it's a one star, two star, three star, you know, uh, it's all possible. If I train with the right people and I work hard enough, I can achieve it. Uh, little did I know once I actually started it, how difficult it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and I realized that the, Sydney was where the Olympics was. So I said, I needed to be in Australia. So there were two reasons I chose Sydney. One was because it had the last two Olympic games were won by the Australians. I said, obviously they know what they're doing. Uh, the Olympics are going to be held there. So I won't have to transport or pay for my horse. All this is already planned as if I'm already going to ride. And I hadn't even qualified. I didn't read it a one star. You know? <laughs> so, and then I decided that this is the path I need to take. So I, you know, just left everything and I went came in Australia and I had a few contacts, a few friends who you know gave me a few names and I started working in stables and moved from stable to stable, you know, mucking stables, cleaning stables, sleeping in stables, because I had to learn everything right from ground. I mean, I was, I was, I was 70, I was old. I was not a little boy because in India, education was important. So I had finished my graduation. I was so how old were you? So I was 18. So my parents had said that, you know, you have to finish your college. That was really important. So I had to finish my undergrad, uh, which I finished in business, so that they had something to fall back on because they thought this was a pipe dream as well. They thought this is never going to happen. So at least he's got something to feed himself every day and may, may get a job eventually. But let him right. pursue this for, for a year or two, fall on his face and come back home. Uh, and I did fall on my face many, many times, but I never came back home. I never gave up because I just, I wanted it so bad. So even when things went wrong, they were the wrong place. I didn't have the right horses. I, I couldn't get to competition. You know, I didn't have the funds. Uh, all my horses were given to me. I didn't even buy my horse. Uh, so people gave me horses. So I was really lucky in that way. You know, my first one star I won on a college borrowed horse. You know, it was a horse that a girl <laughs> used to ride. And she said, well, you know, it's not done a one star, but it has done some dressage and jumping. And I trained it, scooted it. And I won my first one star. That was the biggest thing. You know, when I won my first one star, that's when I realized that this is it. You know, little did I realize. I never won after that, but <laughs> that was a big win for me. And I beat Matt Ryan, you know, the gold medalist. So he had won the gold medal and I thought I was on, you know, on, on cloud nine. And, you know, as, sure. as you know, as eventers, we are very far away from our goal when we think you win a one star and you think now the next goal is the Olympic Games. Well, I think that's cool, John. You know, it's kind of inspiring to hear. And I kind of do what you do, MT, is I put it into my escrow or my universe of what I want. And, you know, it's amazing what the mind can do and what your thought process can go forward. Um, John, you got some questions about the Sydney, Australia, the Olympics. I want to hear a little bit about the Olympics itself. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's that's the whole story is pretty inspiring for anybody right. who's getting into this sport. And so, I mean, just moving forward here, MT. So you move to Australia, you have this dream of the Olympics and all of a sudden it's real. You're there. You've accomplished this goal that. I think it's fair to say you had no idea what you were asking of yourself when you took it. And now you're there at Sydney at some point, 
it must have hit you that wow this has happened so what was that moment like when you walked onto the venue in sydney and thought i'm representing my country no, no, I'll tell you, actually, I'll tell you, I'll put it in real perspective because it's really true that happened, you know, uh, forget about, you know, the dressage day is over and I'm, you know, the cross country day, which we're all frightened and scared of. And I was sitting out there, you know, we all the riders were sitting out there. I was in one corner and Barry Roycroft, you know, uh, accomplished, you know, and he, he had helped me a lot throughout my career. He just walks in and he said, Imti, so how are you feeling? And I told him, I said, I only wanted to be an Olympian. I don't really want to ride. <laughs> you know, my goal is to be here. You know, I'm here. I'm already wearing the India jacket. I've got my black. I've got the flag. Everybody knows that I'm a little. Do I classify as an Olympian? Yes. That's it. I cannot get out there. It's too scary and too big. This is way out of my comfort zone, you know. And I look at all these top, top riders, so accomplished, you know, in the, the US team and the French team and the Australian team. And they've all done six and seven, you know, four stars. And here's my first four star. And this is the Olympic game on a horse that's doing his first four star, you know. So I was so scared. But it was amazing what he said to me. He said, you know, I just have a good feeling. Like, really? Like, he has a good feeling. But, I, you know, you just said, he said, just walk me through your course. Let me tell, tell, tell me, how are you going to jump this whole thing? So I... I went through the whole course and he came back and he said, I think you got this one. And, he, and that was it. You know, and I was just absolutely, if you look at my photograph and I'm t- I'll send you some, I was in that start box and I was white. And I, you know, I'm not white. I'm, 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 right. I'm, you looked like you were on the American team. I thought I looked on the American team. I was that one. I was so scared. I had no legs, nothing. And I just got out of the box. And uh, I remember one thing because I'd, I'd done a stint with Bruce Davidson, you know, and he had told me this because I saw him once warming up at an event and uh, he went and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm like, well, how, how can you get nervous? And he told me, he said, we're all nervous. Yep. He said, it doesn't matter what level you're at. He said, you need a bit of nerves. He said, the day you're not nervous is the day you stop riding, actually. Yes. Said, if this is what we do. This is what we do. So, you know, I tell the youngsters, kids today, you have to deal with your nerves. A little bit of nerves is good. We have to have them. It cannot yeah. overtake us. But boy, it was a scary moment. Let me tell you, even till today, I don't know how I did it and why I did it. And I don't know how I get up in the morning. Uh, that whole night, I didn't sleep. I couldn't believe that I actually was at the Olympic Games and I was going to be jumping these four, this four-star course for the first time. Well, it's, so you- it's, it's amazing. So we want to keep going on this. We're going to take a brief break and we are going to come back, MT. I want to hear, um, I, I think about, we, we about want to hear course. about what you're doing now. But yeah, we want to hear a little bit about the course and um, uh, about when you came to America. So let's take a break, check in with some of our sponsors, and we uh, will be right back with MT. Grant Walter has over 15 years of equine bodywork and saddle fitting experience. His technique uses manual pressure and stretching to release points of restriction, leading to freer movement, reduce soreness, and restored range of motion. He has a thorough understanding of the importance of a properly fitted saddle. He can quickly identify and correct any balance issues and can adjust your saddle on site. I personally have Grant work on all of my event horses to keep them feeling their best before, during, and after their competitions. Grant is based in Florida year-round, but regularly travels to Georgia, Tennessee, and the surrounding areas. For more information or to schedule an appointment, call 484-639-4454. Jump for Joy fences are easy to move, lightweight, durable, and low maintenance. So we're out here on the cross country. We just finished over in the show jumping over the Jump for Joy fences. Had a great time schooling over them. They're really nice and easy to move, so we were able to adjust some things and really have the exact school that we needed thanks to the Jump for Joy fences. I love them. Order yours at jumpforjoyusa.com. When it comes time to compete, I demand the best out of my horses and myself. That's why Elemental Fit Lab, the home of CrossFit Antics, is my home gym. Coach Vilma and her team create a fun, welcoming environment for athletes of all levels. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned athlete, Elemental Fit Lab will guide you towards a stronger, healthier version of you. Mention the John and Rick Show to get three free personal training sessions with enrollment. Sweet Dixie South is an equestrian facility built for the lifestyle of the vendors of all levels. Whether you are coming to Ocala for the entire season, a week, a month, or a year, this beautiful 160-acre farm is the place to settle in and enjoy your time with horses. They offer a full cross-country course with two water features, banks, ditches, an amazing footing to gallop, a spectacular all-weather footing ring, large grass jumping fields, and dressage rings. Located in the rolling hills of North Marion County in Reddick, Florida, 
Sweet Dixie South has 100 stalls and numerous paddocks, apartments, a line of camper hookups, washer and dryer amenities, as well as common areas to complete your experience during your stay. Under the ownership of Mike Campbell and the management of Can Do Joe Adams at Top Rail Tack, Sweet Dixie South has transformed into a premier eventing training facility in Florida. Go to www.sweetdixiesouth.com for more information. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros. And we are still joined by MT from uh, India. And we were talking about your Olympic excursion in Sydney in 2000. Um, what a great story, MT. Tell us about, you said when you were going out of the start box, uh, how you were white and you had no legs. What about coming through the finish flags uh, at that first Olympics for you representing India? I think it was an ex exhilarating, absolutely exhilarating. I couldn't really believe uh, myself uh, that I had actually completed this course, you know, and my horse had, you know, I mean, we were, he was really a very green horse. He had done one three star before going to Sydney, you know, <laughs> we did a, a two star the year before, just in that same year, in 99, we did our first two star together. Then we did our first three star together. And so it was a great accomplishment. And you know what really was special because it's all it's always been for me. Why I do this is because I love the horses. So it was with me and my best friend, we were doing it together, you know, it, I'm even getting goosebumps now talking about it because I miss him so much because we were passing that finish lag and I was pointing at him all the time like, man, he did it. He looked after me, you know, because there were many times. And Lucinda Green was the commentator and I've got a recording uh -huh. of it. And she even mentioned, you know, she said at that time, she said, what an achievement for a young boy who had no idea what the sport was three years ago. <laughs> he had never invented, you know, he didn't know anybody, but he he found out who the important people were. He found out the rules and regulations. He's trained with the best of the best and everybody did it with the goodwill of their heart. No money was allowed, you know? People just came out of their way. And that's coming back to your question when you say, you know, if you put everything in your universe, it, it does provide. Because if you come with the right reasons, you know, not, I was not doing it because I wanted fame. I was not doing it because I wanted to prove a point. You know, I, it wasn't for money. It was just because I wanted it so bad, you know? And right. people realize that, people see that. And it's amazing the amount of people that actually come together to help you to achieve this. That's amazing. And just tell us the horse's name. Spring Invader. And actually, it's funny because his stable name was Kevin, which in, uh, which in Australia is like an Australian Baba. So you can imagine he's like the Kevin of the world. Here's an Indian riding a horse called Kevin. So it's like me riding a horse and we call him Baba. That you know? is so funny. Scott Keach has a funny story about Kevins, but we yes, won't go exactly. into that. Tell, yeah, that was not safe for air. They're called the Kevins know, right? of the world. Uh -huh. Tell us about then, that's amazing. How did you get over to the United States? So then I looked at opportunities. I always look at, you know, look in my goals, looking where I need to go. And I said, all right, I've achieved what I had to do in Australia. Uh, US is where the big, is where the country is, where the sport is. This is where I need to be. So I actually looked for jobs and opportunities. And I found a place which is uh, in Atlanta. And it really worked really well for me because, you know, I, uh, coming from India, the weather is a big issue for us, you know, because we cannot survive this cold. And, uh, and Florida was, you know, wasn't a full season all the time. So Atlanta was a lovely base because I could go north. You know, you could be in Kentucky, South Carolina, or you could be in Florida. So it was a lovely place. Uh, I had a great job where I would train people, uh, uh, a lady's horses. And that was my first stepping stone to actually get my own place, my own farm. And things <clears> just, you know, uh, every day was a different day for me. It was just wonderful. I mean, um, I always you, think you got it. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. And so when you're talking Georgia, you were in, you ended up having a farm in Newton because uh, yes. is that correct? Yeah, because yes. I had in, a farm there as well. So yes, cool. Yes. In Newton, Georgia, I had my own place. And, uh, you know, that's another story, but we, it's another time how I got my place. Uh, right. But it's amazing how things, uh, you know, horses do things, all kinds of things. Great people come together. And, uh, you know, I was able to uh, represent India again. For 2002 so, World Championships. Yes. And, and we, we do, I think what we're going to have to do, because there's so much I want to catch up on with you, we're going to have to have you back another time to go into sort of the world championships Everything. and all of that. But yes, yes. I do want to make sure that we leave time because I just find it so interesting. Eventually, you decide to go back home to India and you have set up an amazing business there. I actually kind of thought when you went back home to India, you were going to be doing something else. And now I keep seeing on Facebook, you've got this beautiful yard you've got a beautiful barn you're teaching students i saw you were teaching one of your students how to do a hoof packing but then the thing that makes me really interested and i'll be honest jen and i have talked about it we want to come to india and visit you um you have i see videos of you guys riding on the beach like having proper jumping lessons and doing things on the beach so just 
what's going on with your business back home and your horses? So this is the thing I started. It's basically an educational school because I really believe that even in India or anywhere else, the education is the most important. And that's what I really want to be. I want to be more not only about lessons, not only about teaching, but also mentoring these kids, you know. So these are young kids, just like I was 20 years ago, just so hungry, uh, but didn't have any knowledge, didn't have any contacts, didn't have any connections, neither do these kids. So they come to my place, which is residential. They can come and stay for a month, two months, three months. And we're the only house on the beach. So we have a seven mile beach, which is with my parents' family. Uh, it was like their beach, uh, uh, holiday home. And wow. it's just stunning. So there's uh, nothing I'm coming. Else. Be ready. It is absolutely beautiful. So we are the only house. It's a very small village. So there's nothing else the kids can do. So they get a bit bored sometimes. But it's a small fishing village. You, know, you get fresh fish as much as you want. The food is healthy. Uh, but it's peaceful. And our footing is amazing because most beaches have a soft sand. So it gets quite deep. Ours is very, very firm. So we're just lucky, you know, it gets dragged every day and watered every day for me, which I know you event riders, how much y'all spend on your arenas to get a new arena every day. And I have one every morning, every time the high tide comes and, it, and the water goes back, I have a new, I have a new pudding. And the whole idea was we take, we do water therapy. We take the horses in for a swim and we want to give this, uh, the, the whole knowledge is of the whole experience that it's all about looking after your horses, not just coming and having a jumping lesson, you know? How do we take care of these horses? What is the nutrition involved in it? We do theory classes. I do practical classes. So it's real fun and I absolutely love it. I don't know whether I'm making that much money, but I'm enjoying it thoroughly. MT, you make me smile. I think that's awesome. So tell us, is this, is this a part of your book that you're writing? Is it because that, that's intriguing to me, just your whole setting you just said. And, yes. and are the kids, I got two parts of the question is what's the book about and, and the kids that you're working with, do you see anybody that you believe could be an Olympian? So the first book is what the book is about. The book is called Riding Free. It's a, it was published by Harper Collins. And the whole reason I wrote the book was to tell people what my journey was. So that was the real reason. And it's not for equestrian riders. It's for any people in whatever you want to do in your life, what it takes to get out of your comfort zone, what it takes to live your dream Full, follow your passion. Don't do something because my friends are doing it. Don't do something because it's convenient. Don't do something because it's less expensive because you'll never have enough money and you'll never have enough time in the world. You'll never do. So now is the time. Get it going, get going and get it achieving. And when you read the book, you really see the, the hurdles that I went through, but I never gave up. I mean, I had walls after walls after walls. I was a nobody who wanted to achieve this huge thing, which nobody could in my family's horsey. They didn't even know what I was doing, right? But the support <laughs> that people came, the families that came together, the people that came together. So that's what the story is about. It's really nothing to do with riding or equestrian. It is my journey. So it tells you how it goes through all, the, all those phases. But it's really to tell the younger generation that please get out of your comfort zones and go do things that you're passionate about. You will make money doing them. You know, but most people, they follow, but no, because it's, a, it's the class, we have to become a doctor in India, we have to become an engineer, we have to do this, you know, they already have a set path of the things they want to do, half the time they hate the things that they do, half the time they don't want to do the things that they're doing, you cannot live life like that, you know, you have to try things, and failure, I can guarantee it's going to happen, everybody fails. But MT, you're an inspiration, man, it's, it's amazing. Um, yeah. I, All I'm doing is smiling. Yeah, I just I'm getting <laughs> shivers up my my back listening to you talk about this and the inspiration you're giving to all those kids there. And honestly, all the people who are listening to it here. So I want to read the book. Where do I get the book? So it's on Amazon, but unfortunately, it's you know, we don't have it in, in the US right now, but it's on Kindle. So if anybody's okay. on Kindle right now electronically, you can you can still go on Amazon Kindle and get it. So uh, it's and will easy. it be available on a hardback or a soft paperback? In, yes, uh, we're, in we're going to work on that. I, I'm working on that right away. And in fact, I'm going to try and see whether we can do something with the show, whether I can just send you a large amount, you know, and then you, it's an inexpensive book where in India, it's been sold for $5. You know what I mean? It's not like an expensive book. I want it to be cost effective. I want it all kids, smaller kids. And it's an easy read. That's the best part, Jonathan. So even if somebody from fifth standard to parents and grandparents are reading the book because it's about awesome. telling them how to support their kids to achieve what they want to achieve. Don't, Man, you let don't us know however kids. we can help you with that. We're happy to do uh, it. Yeah, um, it'd be wonderful. And, and because again, it's not a money-making exercise. It's not something that we, nobody's making. There's not enough money to be made. I really want more people, more, more young riders to read the book, to realize everybody has got to live their dream. Well, I'm, what, I'm, 
I'm going to do is suggest to Rob Burke next year that you come and be the keynote speaker because you're very inspirational. And oh, I love and to, love to. I love, I love hearing you talk. You just made me smile the whole time, MT. And it's, I think to John's point, I think we just need to get a group up and you just say what week we can come and we're yeah. going to come visit you. No, no, definitely. We have to just wait for all this to get over. So coming back to your second question, it's quite exciting. So we can end on that, is that we had a young boy who didn't have the finances, didn't have the thing. I saw him compete. I, I saw him at a local show where he was just like a, a little, little more than a groom. But he had lovely hands, soft. And I said, you know, why don't you come and ride with me? And he said, well, I don't have the money. I said, I never asked you what the money is. I said, just come and ride. And he worked with me for seven months. And last two weeks ago, we, I sent him to England. So he's oh. actually now in England. And first time, he's never left India. He didn't have a passport. We had to get him a visa. We had to get him everything we, we got him. He's so excited. He's with Victoria Penanozzi, who's an Italian rider, you know? Uh, he's right. now a, a working student there. And he called and me the other day. And it's just wonderful that I can give him this opportunity. He's never, ever left the country or ever, ever, ever. And he's such a lovely boy. And I just hope that he, you know, he makes, makes something out of his life. Give us his name. His name is Gotham. Got, how do you say it? Got him. Yeah. G A U T A M. Got, got him. Got him. Yeah, you got him. Got him. You got him. So it's just this is what I want to do in this school is to give these kids who've never had opportunities, who love the animals so much, to go overseas and be working students, train with the top riders, work <laughs> for them, you know, give them that opportunity. And I hope I can find a channel where we can send more and more of these young riders. There's so many who just love it and don't have the funds or the finances, you know, but at least they can be involved in this sport in some way. Well, I think we should be able to spread the news about you, MT, because you're infectious. So I, I really hope that John and I can have you back on the show so we can do a lot more talking. Definitely. And, happy and to. Happy to. So appreciate you joining us. And it's great seeing your face. You always made me smile and you made me smile the whole time now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, y'all have been great friends. I have uh, John and Jenna been really good to be all, always as well. You know, I'm a, li a little fellow going to all the shows, and there's, it's always nice to have a familiar face when you get to all these shows because you're already so scared. And it's it's a lonely path, you know. All this that we do, it is lonely. You know, we have to. You have the few friends that you have, you've got to trust and cherish. Well, and that being said, we're gonna wrap it up here, John. I thanks everybody for joining us here. You know, we're on all the podcasts and we're on the Facebook and YouTube, The John and Rick Show. Make sure you watch this show because MT just makes you smile the whole time. Thanks Thank for joining us, much. my friend. Thanks so much. Thanks. Say hi to everybody. Bye. Bye. I'm Rick Wallace. And I have John Holly here with me. Three faces, dressage, cross country, show jump you're out on course and something's going wrong or going right, you know how to react to what they're doing. It was built originally to be a schooling facility and so everything's set up very conveniently.